Hey everyone, I'm Wendy and we're doing some more Dollar Tree organizational hacks and storage tricks for small spaces or pretty much any space at all. So if you like saving money, this is your video. And now without further ado, let's get started. These metal storage bins are pretty much a staple at my Dollar Trees and you can use them for your drawers to organize them. I have them all around my house. And I'm also going to be using these teeny tiny little hooks, also from Dollar Tree. The adhesive on these are not that great, but I want this to be temporary because I plan on redoing my nightstand. So you can't place anything too terribly heavy in there, but it's perfect for lightweight things like your remotes and your glasses. But in my bedroom, my side table is always cluttered with remotes and my cell phone and glasses. And one thing that always bugs me is trying to find the end of my cell phone charger. So I'm using one of Dollar Tree's binder clips. And if you just clip that to the side and then feed your charger in through those top clamps, you'll always have easy access to them and they won't fall out. Now I tried this on a bunch of different chargers that I had here and all of them worked, all of them fit through there, but some of them were too small so that when you let go of it, it would fall back out. So in order to fix that, I just took some chenille stem and added it to the opening of my binder clip and then I could let it go and it wouldn't fall back through. Another option is to use their hook and loop tape. They come in either black or white, depending on what color your side table is. Mine's ultimately gonna be white once I redo it and it'll be easier for you to see how I actually set this up. So I just cut a little piece off and wrap one side around my cord and then the other side will go onto the side of my nightstand. Now this adhesive is no joke on this hook and loop tape. So if you're worried about ruining your finish, you may wanna go the other route and use the clip-on option with the other hooks, or you can even use the real command hooks since those are removable. Another space saver and way of clearing out some of that clutter is to make a super cute jewelry holder using a frame sign, some felt, and those long foam rollers from Dollar Tree. I think using pretty places for storage and organization is a win-win, especially for small spaces. But even if you do have plenty of room, you're still adding some cuteness and who doesn't love that? <laughs> So I took out the backing of my sign and I painted the words on that and all of the rollers just to make sure none of the colors show through my white felt. And then I doubled up that felt and it's exactly the right amount for this project. And I left a little gap at the top and started gluing down the felt and then a roller and then a, the felt and then the roller. And I made sure to tuck in that felt so it's almost under the roller. And then I squished the next roller right next to it so it's nice and cuddly. Of course I learn as I go, so be sure to take out the inside wires and cut about an inch off of the ends of your rollers before you paint them so that when you put it back together, your frame will fit. It took me a few rows to figure that one out. <laughs> So then I just replaced my frame and pushed down the little tabbies on back to keep the board in place. And then I'm gonna cut off the excess felt. Dollar Tree also carries these picture hanging kits in the automotive and hardware section. So I used some of the nail-in hooks on the sides and then screwed in a couple of the eye hooks at the top to hang my bracelets and necklaces and earrings on. So you can hang this on the wall, but I want mine to sit on a shelf in my room. So to make it stand up, I used the backing of a Dollar Tree house frame that has a kickstand, and I just glued that on the back. And if you don't have an extra frame backing, Dollar Tree also sells these plate stands in black or clear, so you can display it that way too. So 
So then for some more cuteness, I added a Dollar Tree succulent at the bottom and it's done. And this took me about 20 minutes, even with my mistakes, but I think it's so pretty and also gives me a chance to show you one of the beautiful handmade necklaces a sweet viewer Gretchen sent to me. So I have a really sensitive smeller and Dollar Tree sells essential oils that you can find in their candle section. And if you put some on a makeup sponge, which by the way are super spongy nowadays, more than they used to be, but then you can tuck it into your toilet paper roll or you can hide them in a linen closet by just adding a little piece of tape at the bottom so it doesn't mess up your shelf. And you get a nice little whiff when you open the cabinet door or when you're, well, you know. <laughs> If you're like me, I strongly dislike mail clutter, so I wanted a temporary landing place for my incoming mail, and I stress the word temporary because this can get filled up and messy too if you don't have a permanent bookkeeping system in place, which I do, but that's for another video. So I'm using a Dollar Tree sign and two of their plastic napkin holders, and there's an empty spot at the bottom of these, so in order to get them attached to my base, I had to glue in some Dollar Tree foam board and then mark where I wanna place them, and I'll leave a space in between the napkin holders so it has three slots. Now, if you have three napkin holders, you could put them all on here and call it done, but I only had two. And then I used the matching salt and pepper shakers and put one on each side to fill up those open edges, or you could move the slots to one side and add both shakers on one side, whatever configuration works best for you. And then I had Michael J spray paint the whole piece in Krylon's matte white and use my black chalk paint to distress it. Now, if you're not a bow person, you can leave these out, but I just added two sweet little perky bows to each side and you can also leave this part out and I tried leaving it blank, but I just couldn't stop myself from writing You've Got Mail on the front in a faux calligraphy. And I love picking up any black and or white pencils from the Dollar Tree because they match my house, so why not? And then I'm adding a letter opener that used to belong to my grandpa along with some greenery and you've got an adorable place to put your mail. Speaking of pencil holders, this was a project I did a while back but thought I should include it, especially since these barbecue brushes are usually out during the summer months. And I just pulled out the bristles, covered the holes with some Dollar Tree spackle, glued all three of them together, and then added Jenga pieces for the feet. And then just give it the finish and color of your choosing. You can distress it like I did mine, or not, whatever you want. And then I took four empty caper jars and wrapped some jute twine at the top and marked where I want them to be drilled in and I used a spade bit to do that. And there were some issues on this project that I left out of this video and since I did end up wrapping the bottom with some nautical rope anyway, there's really no need for power tools here. And then I embellished the fronts with some gathered ribbon flowers, popped some colored pencils in there. And this is another way to have something normally not so cute, but always needed, easily accessible. And if you're a crafter, keeping your twine, string, or yarn under control can sometimes be a challenge. So I made a Dollar Tree version of Magnolia's tin holders by picking up two of these round cardboard cylinders and painted them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color moss. And then I used two cell phone holders for the top, so I had to paint those as well, and made a hole in the lid added a Dollar Tree adhesive label on the front with two brass colored brads at each end. And I have been using mine since I made this video originally back about a year ago, and they're still in perfect condition and I use them every single day. And not only are they functional, I just really love looking at them. <laughs> Thank you.
Now moving into the kitchen, I'm gonna be making a Lazy Susan using a pizza and a pie pan, a wooden dowel, a small styrofoam ball, and there's a flat head tack in there too. So to get the center point of your pans, you can use the labels that are stuck on top and just mark that intersection. So you're going from your 12 o'clock to six o'clock and then your nine o'clock to three o'clock, if that makes sense. And then I'm just gonna drill a hole into both of them and then poke my dowel into the styrofoam ball and then stick it up through the pie pan and make a mark of where I need to cut that dowel. And I used my new Dremel that I just got for my birthday to do that. And then I'm gonna put my tack on top of my pizza pan and press it into the tip of my dowel that I'll hold on the other side of the hole. And then I place the dowel through my upside down pie tin. You should see my hands, they're flinging all over because I'm trying to explain this. <laughs> and then I added some glue to the hole of the ball and placed it on top of the dowel. And now we have a Lazy Susan for less than $3. Now you can leave the pie pan as is, or you can paint it, or you can cut a circle out of a roll of Dollar Tree's shelf grip liner so that nothing slips, and then just tuck it into one of those pesky corners of your pantry or just on any shelf in there for easier access to your condiments, your canned goods, or whatever you want. And you can still place your other storage bins right around it. And I'll tell you, all of this organizing really got me in the mood to do a whole pantry makeover. So let me know in the comments below if you guys would like to see that. Now my spice cabinets have needed attention for some time and some of you may know I'm only 4'11 and 3 quarters. So God blessed me with a six foot four hottie named Michael J. <laughs> and he has that vertical advantage that I don't for this project. So we first went through and got rid of all the expired goods and oh my word, there were so many. We threw out so much. And then after the shelves were cleared, we vacuumed and wiped down all of the shelves. Well, actually he did. And then we filled our canisters and got all of those packaged dry goods out of the pantry. And then we're gonna place them up here because he can reach them, but I can't. So I don't even really know what's on the top shelves. And this is a good time to adjust your shelves so that they're more functional for whatever your needs are. And we had actually purchased a spice rack that extends to fit into the size of cabinet that you have, but it has a little bump in the middle. So I decided instead to use these Dollar Tree signs. And I think the 36 inch upper cabinets are pretty standard in that width. So these were perfect because they're 18 inches. And I just put two of those stacked in front of that brace thing that holds the cabinet up and then pulled those a little bit forward and then put one on top of the brace and those stacked ones and then one on the bottom so they're stair stepping, if that makes sense. And then you can add your spices and seasonings and you'll be able to see them easily. And our metal rack cost $25 on Amazon and this only cost us $4. Of course, you can paint this too to make it cuter, but I thought this would be easier for you to see exactly how I built it. And then we'll deal with the other side in just a minute. And then another option for your spice storage and some cuteness is to use the smaller sized wood signs. And these are both usually found with the frames and pictures. So I pulled off the metal pieces from the front and the coffee words, the little pop-up words. And then I had Michael J take them outside and sand and paint them along with three more of those wire bins. And he painted them in Krylon's matte black. And then I replaced the metal pieces once they were all dry and then I'll start attaching my bins. So I did the bottom first and I'm using another one of my birthday presents, a Milwaukee staple gun. And all of these tools will be listed in my Amazon store so that you know exactly what brand and model I'm using. But if you don't have a staple gun, that's okay too because you can use one of Dollar Tree's zip ties and just wrap it around like you see me doing here and pull it super, super tight and those will stay right in place. And then we'll go back in and touch up those staples with some black paint so that you can't even see them. Now I didn't notice until afterwards, but there are these little seams on the bins. So just make sure you point those toward the back. And then you can add your spices. And I just looked for the cute bottles. And then I'll put some garlic in the top bin and some fresh basil would be really awesome. But I only had some Dollar Tree greenery. But I love this so much, even though I do have room in my cupboard, 
It's just a super functional way to add some more cuteness to your countertops. Now I have never been a real fan of butcher blocks, but Michael J likes to have our steak knives out, so we compromised by my trying to make it cute. <laughs> so I used four Dollar Tree books and painted them white. Of course, if you can find them already white with white covers, that'll alleviate this step. And then I just covered the spines with some cardstock, glued them all together, added some decals in the font called The Skinny from Defont.com, and then I wrapped some jute twine around them and tied a sweet little bow. And I have these decals listed in my Etsy shop, but Dollar Tree also has those rub-on letters that would work just as well. And as you can see by the poor lighting in those previous clips, I made this over a year ago and it's still working for us. And you can see by the tops, we definitely use it daily. It also covers up my outlet and I think this is the cutie, patootiest butcher block ever. Now if you're short on counter or drawer space, you can put your measuring cups and spoons on a cookie sheet by using these magnetic buttons you'll find in the crafter square and then just attach them to the handles with some sort of permanent adhesive. I'm using some cement from Dollar Tree. Just make sure that the handles are flat. And then I painted the back of my cookie sheet with a couple of coats of white chalk paint and then gave it an enamel wear edge with the Dollar Tree furniture marker in black. And then I arranged my cups and used a black paint pen to mark the measure amounts. And then to hang it, I made two holes at the top with my crop -a dial but you could also glue some twine to the back and then hang it that way. And I'm gonna be putting this on the inside of my cupboard door, which is also an area of prime real estate that a lot of people don't use. So when I went to the kitchen to hang it up, Michael J was getting ready to cook something yummy and it gave me another idea. So you've probably seen these sink drain racks before and they're pretty pricey. So I'm gonna be using two of Dollar Tree suction hooks and a cooling rack and these guys can really hold some weight. So I attached them to the corners of the rack just over the side of our sink and then I can wash these beautiful homegrown tomatoes from our sweet next door neighbors and then I'll just place them on the rack to dry. And you can also use this for dishes or anything that you want because it's pretty heavy duty. And we also had some yummy cabbage soup for dinner. So back to my measuring cups, I'm gonna mark where those holes are on the back of the door and then I'm gonna close it to make sure that the shelf goes in between the two rows. And I'm using command hooks so that they're removable and if we ever get these cabinets painted, I'll be able to take those off without leaving a mark. And then to keep it from banging against the cabinet, I just used some Dollar Tree double-sided tape at the bottom. And then inside of my cabinet, I used some clear bins and they're perfect for those big spice containers. And normally I keep Michael J's crushed chilies, oregano and chili powder in his menudo bin but they were either empty or expired, so we'll have to get some more. And then just keeping some items in the wider bins, you can pull it out and see everything. And who knows what's happening up there because that's foreign land to me. <laughs> so I keep my utensils in this super cute crock and I'm gonna be making a Dollar Tree version using this treat container and some paint and faux leather ribbon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is sand it down to get off some of that red and also make sure that I don't have any little paws peeking through, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And then I'll paint it with my white chalk paint and then add my faux ribbon to the side so that it kind of resembles the handles on my original crock. And then I masked off the bottom with some electrical tape because it's got a little bit of a concave surface. And then I'm gonna use my Waverly Wax and Antique, brush that on, and then I'll add some white to soften it up. And when I removed my tape, a little bit of the white came off, so I just touched that up. 
And I think this is a great $1 alternative to mine and it'll free up a whole drawer. Again, you can also hide your outlets with this too. And then if you want to camouflage your toothpicks and stir sticks in some cuteness, you can pick up two of these Dollar Tree bottles. And I just did the same treatment at the bottom as my crock and then replaced the stoppers. And I get black stirs from Walmart, so I'm okay with those showing because they match my kitchen. But if you have the red ones and want to hide them, this works pretty well. It does take a little more effort to pull them out but I think they're super cute, especially next to the crock. And then after I filled them up, I decided to write on the bottoms with my black paint pen. On one, I'm gonna put pick, and on the other one, I'm gonna put stir. So when we moved to this house in 2016, this gas range came with it and we haven't replaced it yet, but I wanted to use the space above it for more storage. So I checked my scrap bin of wood and I couldn't find a one by four long enough for the top. So I ended up using this Christmas sign I made in one of my very first videos. And then for the sides, I used some scraps from our back patio slat wall that we made and just attached the top to the sides with some wood glue and a brad nailer and then painted it white and added some black distressing on the edges. Oh, my Lanta, I am so in love with how this turned out. And that space is now functional, pretty, and it hides some really big holes in the tile where a microwave used to be. I don't know why we didn't do this sooner. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed these projects and storage ideas and you're inspired to do some Dollar Tree organizing in your own home sweet home. And I really think an organized and tidy home brings a sense of peace to our spirit. I know I always feel better when everything has a place and is easy to find, which also makes it easier to put things away when you have a system. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone has a blessed day and remember to always be the light. Bye!